homeschooling is different everywhere. I mean, in America, it's different for every state, and it sounds like it's different for every province in Canada. So it's different for every person. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, you know, yeah. my two biological daughters. One was an an academic junkie. Mm. She she was doing grade four level stuff at four, only because like I let her do what she was interested in. Mm -hmm. She loved the alphabet letters. She took the flashcards to bed with her instead of stuffed <laughs> animal. Like this kid was crazy. And I'm thinking, here I am trying to unschool. And and she's like so into the academics. Right, but right. Uh, yeah, so she's the one that went to university at 13. She uh -huh, started yeah. auditing university courses at nine, not because I made her, but because she had the curiosity. Right. And right. And I had the uh, the other kids that are, and I had a home daycare at the time as well. So I took all of us with yeah, the stroller yeah. and the, you know, and the babies and the diaper bag and into the back of the lecture hall. And Right, right. So now do you have, no. uh, the, does the state have requirements for w no. what you do or what families do? Okay. Not, none at all. Okay. Okay. I, I say none at all, but the, the legalities are that you have to operate any time, and I'm going to stress that because it's so great, any time between the hours of nine and four mm. on any school day. Oh, interesting. So you could literally have a private school in Ontario that operated for five minutes on a Monday. <laughs> <laughs> How interesting. <laughs> you, you are not required to follow the Ontario curriculum. Mm-hmm. Although you have to be prepared to offer any courses that from that curriculum should uh, somebody ask it, right? Yeah, okay. So we have that. We have that. Nobody <laughs> has ever, ever asked for the ministry curriculum. Uh, right. <laughs> you know, so we don't have, and, that, and that's it. That, mm -hmm. That's it. So anytime any school day and have five or more pupils. Right. Full time. And full time could be that five minutes because right, right. full time is, you know, yeah, it's absolutely free, which is nice. beautiful and lovely and wonderful. Right. Right. There's no, you don't have to register with anybody. All the ministry wants from me is statistics. Okay. Um, about how many females, how many males, mm. uh, how many uh, approximate grade levels. And okay. we have the category U for ungraded. Mm. So we can put U if they're ungraded. Okay. So all yours are U's. <laughs> yep. Yeah. All of ours are U's. <laughs> right on. Right on. This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Berg.